Mr. Kyle, let me ask you a couple of quick questions on some of your testimony. You had mentioned that uh, with general uh, transfers uh, into infrastructure spending or from things that have a fake pay for uh, from general transfer, uh, that has the potential to actually slow our economy when infrastructure typically infrastructure construction increases our economy. Adding additional debt, adding just the transfers without pay for has the potential to slow that. Can you go into greater detail? So um, any any investment in infrastructure is likely to um, build the capital stock, and if those are well selected projects, they would um, tend to grow the economy as well. Um, as as the government takes on more debt to um, for general revenue or general obligations, um, that that is um, debt that needs to be serviced in the future. So far, interest rates have been low, and um, and. The question is uh, whether and how long that will be the case. Because that could have the potential then once interest rates uh, continue to climb and the debt continues to climb. So uh, you, you seem to be affirming having something that's paid for uh, is very important rather than just a general transfer uh, in something that is not paid for or having a pay for that is not legitimate. Well, so so um, the the general transfers uh, obviously are, are partly funded by debt and and um, increases in debt um, are uh, need to be need to be serviced. Right. Um, so yes, Mr. Kyle, there, there's been some questions about electric vehicles. Which currently, electric vehicles uh, get a tax credit for the purchase of those vehicles, and then they also drive on the roads for free. Uh, now, they're lighter weight vehicles typically, and uh, so they're like other passenger cars as far as the damage they do the road, but passenger cars do pay a fee uh, to be able to be on the road. Uh, the electric vehicles, uh, I think you've quoted about $200 million in income, which is no small amount uh, if they were just to be able to pay their, their fair share. Now, electric vehicles are dominantly owned by the top 1% wealthiest Americans uh, because they're incredibly expensive vehicles. And one of the perks for being one of those wealthy Americans is also you get to drive the road and not pay a user fee uh, if you buy an electric vehicle. Uh, do you anticipate over the next several years uh, that user fee would uh, would grow uh, with the use of electric vehicles, or do you anticipate that two hundred million dollars a year that would come in if electric vehicles paid the same as gas vehicles uh, to be able to be on the road? Do you think there's an increasing amount of electric vehicles coming, and so that amount of two hundred million dollars would increase? So I think over time it probably would increase. Um, right now, electric vehicles account for about one percent of the vehicle fleet. And about two percent of sales, um, and uh, as they grow as a share of the vehicle fleet, um, a any tax or fee applied to them would would tend to grow. What does CBO anticipate is the size of the fleet growing over the next ten years for electric vehicles? Um, we'd have to get back to you with uh, specifics on that. Um, it, it's um, at the end of ten years, it still wouldn't at current growth rates. It wouldn't be a huge share of the uh, um, of the vehicle fleet, but we, we less than five percent. You would anticipate. Uh, that I don't know. Okay. Well, thank you. Ms. Sheehan, let me ask you about uh, other cost factors. Are there regulatory issues that also increase the cost of construction as you're tracking that as well that we should also address while we're dealing with additional ways to pay for things? Are there ways to also decrease the cost uh, that would have an effect on you? For many years, Senator uh, Ashto has been advocating for further streamlining of the project development process. It is uh, challenging uh, to navigate all of the federal regulations and to deliver projects in a timely fashion. And so we would welcome any opportunities to continue looking at ways to shorten the design phase of projects so we can get them into construction and make those um, improvements that communities and stakeholders are eagerly awaiting. The categorical exclusion issue of allowing states more flexibility uh, with those dollar, dollars, is that something helpful that to you in the past or something that would be helpful in the future? Uh, it's very helpful to have some flexibility um, and to allow state DOTs where it's appropriate to take on more direct responsibility so that we have that ownership over the environmental process. It doesn't mean that we're going to circumvent the law in any way, um, but that we can help expedite things by reviewing documents internally versus having to submit them to federal agency for their consideration. Thank you. Ms. Bloomfield, let me ask you a quick question about um, broadband. We have some areas uh, that are very remote, that it's ex exceptionally expensive to be able to reach some of those areas. Uh, would you encourage the prioritization of some of the, the highest cost area that they would get satellite connection in those areas? 
and that we would get fiber uh, and do priority for where we have more folks in a rural area. For instance, we may have a rural community with 50 people in it uh, that we could get fiber to, but then there's the last three or four people 10 miles out of town that may cost $10 million to get fiber to those. Would you encourage a blending of those to get coverage? I, I will be very frank with you. Um, I do think that um, that there are certain, every tool in the toolbox has to be put on the table when we talk about connecting all Americans. I do think it's really important to think about making the wisest choose, use of federal dollars. I would also say that people jump to the fact that fiber um, and its cost factor, but actually using fiber um, is, is actually cheaper in the long run over many technologies, including those that are going to fuel um, 5G. I also think with satellite, we've got to really be clear about the capacity satellite we'll be able to offer the upfront costs. Um, and even line of sight, you've got some geographic issues. So again, I think that every area has to um, be viewed, but I do think we should be looking at least to see where we can put that future proof technology. Thank you.